at this time of year, you can find stuffing mix everywhere. I mean, obviously it's available all year long, but it's gonna be rare <laughs> that it's hard to find at this time of year. So let's make some recipes with stuffing mix. I am going to be using our favorite one for these recipes. Now, this is if I don't make it homemade, which I have done and it is delicious. But if I need a quick recipe with stuffing mix, this is our favorite. The blue bag or the red bag, I don't know what the difference is. Oh, this is cubed and the other one's like crumbled. Um, so for these recipes, this is what we're gonna be using, but you can use whatever kind of stuffing mix you like. So don't feel like it has to be this one. I'm gonna be using this pork that I just found. This is Nimmin Ranch and I have purchased pork products from them in the past uh, from the grocery store and I have not seen this farmhouse one before. So we're gonna try it and see if we like it. This is a full pound and each one of the recipes that I'm making, because I'm cutting them in half, which you guys know we do all the time, they are only gonna require a half pound of ground pork sausage. I'm gonna cook up this whole thing because it's gonna get used in two different recipes. I will have them posted in the description box because I know you guys want to adjust the amount so if you're feeding more people, you have plenty. All right, we have our heat on medium high. I am not adding any oil or anything to the pan. I just don't feel like it's necessary with the fat content in this. So we're going to cook it up. While I'm cooking this, I'm preheating my oven to 375 degrees, just so we can get that started. And I just took this out of the fridge, so it's really cold. All right, our sausage is done. I've separated that into two separate bowls so that we can use it for the different recipes. I washed this celery, and now we're gonna cut this up for this recipe. I just took some fresh thyme off of our garden, but if you don't have fresh thyme, that's completely fine. You can just use dried thyme, but I'm gonna add some to the celery. I love this thyme because some of the leaves have a bit of purple in them, and that's not something I ever get when I buy it in the grocery store, and it adds this really beautiful color. I love seeing that. All right, I do not have any fresh rosemary right now, so we're gonna add some rosemary to this. Maybe, I don't know, half teaspoon or so. Let's take this over to the stove and we are gonna saute this up. Obviously, you can add onions into this if you're a fan of that. We're not adding onions, but you would wanna saute that together. I've still got some of the fat left in here from the sausage. I'm gonna saute the vegetables or the celery and the herbs in that. Um, if you want to, you can saute in butter or oil if that's your preference. Makes it really easy since I already have that in there. And we're just gonna saute for a couple of minutes, letting it get nice and tender and bringing out all the flavors of those herbs. Another flavor that you may want to add in here is sage. I feel like every single time that we get to November, I say, oh, we need sage. And every single time I forget to order it. While this is cooking, I do wanna add a bit of salt in here. Just bring out those awesome flavors. It's maybe a half teaspoon or so. This already smells amazing. Now that this has been cooking for a few minutes and we're getting close to being done, I'm gonna add, oh, that's a bit much. I'm gonna add about one clove of minced garlic and also let that saute. And you can cook this together with your sausage. Since I'm making two separate recipes, that's why I did it separate. I pulled the sausage out. But I mean, if you had it like this right here, that's also totally fine. We've got a good saute. Our oven is almost completely preheated, which is perfect timing. Add about three-ish cups of this stuffing to this bowl. Oh, ov oven's ready. You could probably go up to four for this half recipe. You can go up to eight. I mean, you know, you know, you can add however much you need to. I'm adding one cup of bone broth or chicken broth, if that's your preference. Now remember, bone broth is gonna have less sodium in it, so you may end up feeling like you need to add a little bit of salt. All right, so we're just kind of rehydrating those um, stuffing cubes, those breadcrumbs. While we're waiting on this, 
Let me know in the comments. Are you a bigger fan of the traditional bread stuffing? Are you a bigger fan of the, I think it's corn, corn muffin, corn stuffing? Is that what it is? I think, I mean, I've had that one too. I am, I, I just really like it in general, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not super picky about the different kinds. I think that, I don't know, it's, I'm, I'm a bread fan. <laughs> Let's just be real. I like bread. While that sits there for a second, I'm going to whisk one egg. Let's add in the sausage and the um, mixture that we made, the celery. This, the smell, it just smells so good. I think I'm gonna need a sturdier spatula to finish this off. Let's add in the one egg and stir to combine. I'm gonna spray my muffin tin really well. And I'm not sure how many we're gonna get yet out of this. I'm assuming we're gonna get six, but I'm not 100% sure. And I'm gonna scoop out with my fourth cup measure. And I think that's, I think that's gonna be a decent size. I'm overfilling it a little, so maybe third cup would be perfect. Ooh, I bet you could add cheese in these too, and that would be good. I think we're gonna get more than six. Obviously, this is not revolutionary. It is just a different way to serve them so that, you know, if you, I think this could be really pretty, especially on a Thanksgiving table. If you have a lot of these kind of set out and people can grab them rather than having it in a nine by 13 dish, still a delicious stuffing, just in a different form. So like I said, my oven is preheated to 375 degrees. These are gonna bake for 25 to 30 minutes. We don't, we wanna watch and make sure they don't get too brown on the top. So I'll set my timer for 25 and then just kind of watch to see how it goes. All right, let's try these stuffing muffins. Take a little bite off of one of them and that'll be mine at the table. <laughs> we are serving from the table. I do think that if you're making these after Thanksgiving, maybe you have leftover stuffing and you make them into muffins, a gravy drizzled on the top would be really good. I mean, you could make a gravy and drizzle them on the top as you're making them before Thanksgiving, but I think that that would add this next level that would be really delicious. Okay, let me tell you why I love these so much. I love how when you make a stuffing in a pan, you get some, the edges get crispy, but you get like a nice center of it that offers a different texture. So it's not quite as crispy. These are crispy on the outside and on the top and soft on the inside. And I love that. I love the mixture of texture. And I'm a big fan of crusty bread, crispy bread. So I like having that on here as well. This is really good. I think I, I, I like this better than regular stuffing. Again, obviously it's the exact same thing. It's just the different textures that are available there. But the, oh, but the flavor, I didn't even comment on that. The flavor is delicious. These are very good. Let's make a breakfast stuffing casserole. I'm starting by chopping up some bell pepper. You do not have to have both colors. You don't have to have bell pepper at all, but I'm gonna use about a fourth of each one. You guys know I love color, so I gotta have a little of both. So we are just going to dice this. I am cutting this recipe in half just based on the amounts that we need. But as always, I will have the links in the description box so you can change the amounts to however many people you're serving. Don't, don't be afraid to decrease a recipe so that you don't waste. I mean, I obviously there are things you can do. You can freeze and eat things later, but I have our entire month of food basically planned out. So I know exactly what we need. And if you're like me and you just, maybe you just don't need a full recipe, don't be afraid to make a half recipe or a fourth of a recipe or double or triple if you have more people coming over or you do want to freeze it. Now, obviously, you can also add onion. We're not adding onion. We are just doing the bell pepper. We're taking this over to the stovetop. I already have a half pound of sausage cooked up. You can use a full pound if you're going with the full recipe. So we are going to add this to the sausage with a little bit of butter and really saute these vegetables. And it's going to be so good because it's going to pull the flavor from that sausage and the butter and then I'll just want to eat just these by themselves. 
All right, my heat is on medium high and I'm really adding in just about a quarter tablespoon of butter. And we're just gonna add in these peppers and get them sauteing. It's just gonna take a few minutes for that to happen. Add just a touch of salt to this just to bring out those awesome flavors. Maybe a half teaspoon. All right, while that is cooking, I'm gonna shred up some cheddar cheese. I actually meant to do this yesterday and totally forgot. <laughs> so I'm just gonna shred that up so we have it for this recipe. Um, you guys ask, it's probably the most commonly asked question, where did you get your cheese grater? There is a link in my description box. So if you look below the video, I always have this linked in here. So right below the video, it'll say something like, see more, it's right below the title everything that you need to know for links for things that I use in this video will be in the description box. So I always have it in there because it is a very common question that I get. And um, the, those of you that have purchased it definitely love it as much as I do. Now, even though we didn't add any onion to this, I am gonna add some onion powder because we do love the flavor of onion. My husband just doesn't like the texture. So adding a little bit of that, that was probably a half teaspoon or so. And then although the recipe doesn't call for it, I am changing the recipe up a little bit. We're making it our own, which you guys know I love to do because we sometimes make completely new recipes that we love. I'm gonna add about a clove or so of garlic to this. I just feel like those flavors are gonna be so good. And we're almost done cooking, so that was the perfect time to add it in. Just letting that garlic work for just a minute, adding that flavor in there. Okay, you do not have to have a KitchenAid mixer for this portion. You just need a bowl and you can mix it all together, but since I have it, it's sitting right here, I'm just gonna use it. We're adding four eggs to this. Obviously, if you're making the full recipe, that means you would have eight eggs. I'm just gonna use my uh, whisking attachment and just get those combined together. I'm gonna add in the sausage and peppers, which I mean, I could straight up just eat it like this. It smells so good, it looks so good. And also we need to add in three ounces of um, stuffing mix. And I think I'm gonna switch to the paddle. Oh, cheese, we need cheese. Just about a fourth cup of shredded cheese. Maybe, maybe a little more, because we like cheese. Mix this together. <laughs> Did y'all see that piece go flying? <laughs> Let's try one more egg, but it might be two. I just, I don't know. I feel like it needs another egg. That looks so much better to me. Perfect. Now we are using an eight by eight baking dish. I am spraying it. And this is going to get poured into the baking dish. This is like a fiesta. I mean, look at all these colors. Evenly spread this out. And now I am actually gonna bake mine in the morning. So this, is, you could probably bake it and then just reheat it in the morning. It really only bakes for 20 to 25 minutes. So I can make this in the morning and then it's fresh. And then we're actually gonna make some hollandaise sauce to go on the top of it. I actually think this would be a great dinner option too. It's a breakfast casserole, but I think it would be delicious at dinner. I'm loosely covering the casserole with foil, and this is gonna go into my 350 degree oven for in between 20 and 25 minutes. Going to attempt this hollandaise. So I'm gonna turn my heat onto about a medium, and I have a half stick of butter here in this pot. There's five minutes left on the casserole, so I'm thinking this is a good time to start the hollandaise. Now we're gonna start to add in the other ingredients. I've got a half tablespoon of lemon juice. Obviously do a full if you are uh, increasing this recipe. A tablespoon and a half of milk and two egg yolks. Now we basically just whisk this for about three to five minutes. It's gonna get nice and frothy and once that happens and it thickens up, then you know that it's ready. You pretty much need to serve this uh, immediately. So as soon as possible after making this, you wanna serve it. Look, it's already thickening up so fast. So we are gonna go ahead and remove this from the heat. You can see there, you've got a nice thick sauce 
And, oh, nice, the casserole is also done. You can add cayenne pepper to this if you want, and that is gonna give it a little bit of heat too. If this casserole is done, we are going to just serve it up, put some of that hollandaise over the top, and then you can top this with paprika, cayenne, whichever you like. I mean, you don't have to top it with anything, but just adding a little bit of color to the top, I feel like looks so pretty with that sprinkle. This is probably the best breakfast casserole I've ever had. The flavors are so good. And it's shocking how easy it is to make a hollandaise. It's one of those things that you think is scary, but it's not scary at all. It's actually really easy to make. The only suggestion I want to make on this casserole is you do not need to add any salt at all. <laughs> With the sausage and all the flavors of the stuffing, extra salt just overdoes it. But y'all, it is so delicious. Absolutely fine without the hollandaise, but that took it over the top. So good. This is something that I grew up with. An aunt of mine made it all the time because it was my cousin's favorite. We have just always called it chicken casserole. I am gonna cut this recipe in half. It does typically make a nine by 13 pan, but we don't need quite that much. So we're gonna do an eight by eight version. We've got two large chicken breasts here in this pot. I am boiling them so that we can shred up that chicken. While that chicken is cooking up, we're going to melt about a half stick of butter. I'm not measuring this exactly, just approximately. Pepperidge Farm Classic Stuffing. This one is herb stuff. Now we are only going to be using about half of this bag. So we're adding in the melted butter and we will mix all of that together. Now what she does is save some of the stock from cooking the chicken and add it in here. But she also adds bouillon to that. So it's got all that extra flavor. I did not cook mine in bouillon. It's just water and salt that I cooked it in. So we're gonna be adding bone broth into here. So we are making a few adjustments just based on the way that we normally eat things. I'm gonna add probably about a cup, cup and a half or so of this chicken bone broth. And we're going to get this to a thin consistency. That's what it says thin consistency. Start with that, see what it looks like. Oh, we forgot to preheat the oven. You're gonna preheat your oven to 350. Okay, there's no remaining liquid. It's all soaked in. I don't know that I would call this a thin consistency though. So let's just add a touch more. I feel like that's probably what she was talking about. I am gonna spray the baking dish. And then all of the stuffing goes at the bottom of the pan here. We're just creating a layer of the stuffing. Okay, I think that our chicken is done. So I'm gonna shred it up. I'm just gonna use my KitchenAid mixer because that makes it so easy to shred. I did season the water that we cooked this in, but I'm gonna add a little more seasoning here. And this is not part of the recipe, so you guys know I always have to change things up a little bit. I just can't ever do anything standard. I'm going to add a little bit of our favorite Kevin's seasoning, some garlic powder, maybe a half teaspoon, and same with the onion powder, about a half teaspoon. And I'm also gonna add a touch of Italian seasoning, again, right around a half teaspoon. We can mix this, and that's just gonna shred up the chicken for us. She does this in layers apparently. So the chicken goes on top and then there's a creamy layer that goes after that. I kind of feel like you could mix the sour cream and the cream of in here and that could be your layer. Let's change it just a little, just a little bit. It'll be all right. I mean, I just, I have to do, I have to make adjustments. I make my own cream of, so that's what this is. But if you're making the full recipe, you need about a can and a half of cream of chicken, cream of mushroom, whatever one you want to use. She uses cream of chicken and she uses a can and a half for the full recipe. Now I'm not gonna add the whole can in here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of the can and we're gonna add a little bit of Greek yogurt too because you guys know we use Greek yogurt instead of sour cream. Okay, so I'm just adding a couple of tablespoons but we are gonna make the layer that's gonna go on top. We're just experimenting with a different version here. Now we can take the chicken and it's gonna go all over the top. Spread this all over. Okay, now we're gonna make the mixture that goes onto the top here. 
I'm gonna use the can of cream of. And for the size that we're making, we need about eight ounces of sour cream, or in our case, we're using Greek yogurt. So this is definitely a less fat version than um, with sour cream, but you can do it either way. The taste of sour cream and Greek yogurt is pretty similar, especially if you get a full fat version of Greek yogurt. This is non-fat, but you guys can do it however you want. It's totally fine. I have another way we're changing it up. I gotta add some green. So we're gonna add some parsley into this mixture and I'm gonna add some on top for garnish. It's just too tan, too white. It needs more, more things. Pretty good and then we'll add some more to the top which will be very nice. Okay, so let's add this layer here. I really hope I'm doing this right. I mean, I was never really interested in watching or paying attention when anyone in my family actually made this. Sprinkle the saved stuffing overall. Oh, so we need the stuffing back out. We're gonna sprinkle that over the top. Bake at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. I do remember there being a nice crunch on the top. We're gonna wait till after this comes out of the oven to add, to add a little bit more parsley garnish. Let's give it a go. It's going in for 45 minutes at 350 degrees. All right, let's see if this tastes like I remember. Obviously we made those few adjustments, so it might not be exactly the same. It does taste like I remember. I'm sorry that Ashley, my cousin, is not here to eat this right now. It's interesting because my husband's mom makes a very similar dish that she calls chicken stretcher, and they call it that because it would go a long way, so it, stre it would stretch a long way. Very similar flavors, very similar taste, Obviously we tried to make ours a little bit more healthy than what maybe it was, maybe the way that it was made when I was growing up, just based on the Greek yogurt and the homemade cream of, but very good flavors. It tastes really fresh, but also really hearty at the same time. It's just like, it's so nostalgic. Our verse today comes from Colossians 4, 6. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you need more kitchen inspiration, I've got tons of it here on my channel. I highly suggest that you check out the video that I have listed above. That one is going to inspire and encourage you in the kitchen. Have a great week.